This is Dave Tiromio again here with Latin Business Today with a very special guest, and I'm very, very proud to have her here, Sylvia Alvarez. Sylvia is the vice president, senior vice president for the acting, I guess it is, I don't know what the difference is, for uh, uh, communications for the Major League Baseball's Players Association, MLBPA, which is arguably... I would argue one of the strongest, if not the strongest union in the, in the world. Those of us who are are uh, are history or, or, or fans of the game r- remember the great Kurt Flood story back in the in the early seventies. So we're not going to get into that right now. We want to talk to Sylvia about her career. I know she's got a, a great and a very different career path to this job, which we'll get into in a second. But also want to talk about her her great education because she went to two great schools, Colgate, where I told her my daughter went. So I was pleased to see that. And she also got a, a uh, an advanced degree from Middlebury. So Sylvia, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what can you tell us? What, let's, as they say, start at the beginning. Obviously, we have your bio, which we will be posted to the website. But, um, you know, this, this great education, great background, very different background from what we see in, in, a, in the sports world where we're from. Tell us, tell us how you got here. Yeah, you know, it, it's been a... I say it's been a circular path, but there's been so many different uh, places that I stopped through on my way here. I, um, I, if you asked me at the beginning of my career, if I would end up in sports, I probably would have never believed that, you know, I, um, I went to school to and, and got degrees in, uh, in political science and in literature. Um, so I thought my path would lead me into teaching um, or something that had to do with using my language skills, but definitely yeah. I didn't think I would end up in communications. However, in my June, was it my junior year or my senior year? I think it might've been my senior year at Colgate. I decided to do an internship at a big PR firm here in New York, Rubenstein Public Relations. Oh yeah, sure, no more. And they, they brought me in and they, you know, typical intern duties they put me at a desk to update a media list a huge media list and back then they had um they, they their big clients were entertainment clients so i had to update the media list and put together media kits for eartha kit and little richard oh and nice so those were their clients at the yeah. time and so i spent my time putting together you know the 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 actual uh, press kits that we used to do back in the days before we got all digital. Um, and then I had a, a manual list that I would have to call up and find out if we had the right contacts for for the media in, in, in the list. And so that's what I started doing. But they sat me next to a woman who spent her entire day on the phone pitching media. And I was very curious because she just spent the whole day calling different people and I was you know intricately listening so sometimes it's not what you're actually doing in your internships but rather like what's around you that kind of can influence you and I just thought she was the coolest thing ever I was like I want to do that I love to talk I have the the gift of gag you know (laughs) the gift of speaking so you know I would love to be able to talk to media and and I just kind of fell in love with that. And so I went back. My, my internship got cut short because we had a big, huge snowstorm. It was one of those winter internships. Mm. And it got cut short. And I went back to Colgate. But it, that experience never left me. And so when I was thinking about what I would do once I got out of school, I really felt this desire to work in communications. So my first job out of, out of school was in uh, nonprofit fundraising. But I quickly transitioned into a one of the major public relations firm, Edelman Public Relations. Ooh, well, that's a big one for me. Yeah. And so I, I tell young people all the time when they're talking about their careers that they should really um, start out at a public relations firm because it is the grounds to learn everything that you ever want to know about communications. You learn how to you learn from how to answer the phone to how to pitch, how to mm-hmm. write, how to put together a presentation. I mean the the wide range of of um of experiences that you can get at a firm but in addition to that you have the resources right you have people who have been doing this for a very long time that can teach you and you also have the financial resources to have the the right media list uh, to have the right research for whatever project you're working on mm-hmm. so that's that's always been my advice to young people and so after edelman 
I decided I was going to, Edelman was huge and, and had a lot of people and a lot of resources. And I got brought on to work in the multicultural space. This was the very beginning of the multi multicultural period where, you know, mm -hmm. companies wanted to reach um, ethnic audiences. And so mm -hmm. I got brought in to work on some of that stuff. So I had really major clients that wanted to reach that, that Latino market. And so, mm -hmm. um, but I was really worried that I was going to get pigeonholed into just doing communications, Latino communications. And mm -hmm. so I worked really hard to figure out what would be my next step. And then my next step, it was uh, Latino clients that were trying to reach the American audience. And mm -hmm. so I went to a smaller firm where I got that different kind of experience. Um, and, mm -hmm. and so every job that I've had, and I've had multiple jobs, I think I've worked in the last time I counted, I think it was seven different industries that I've worked in um, from, you know, the communication space to uh, uh, higher education, to nonprofit, to politics, to government, you know, to sports um, mm -hmm. and and uh, also healthcare. So mm -hmm. there's just been, you know, it's been a wide range of different industries. But in every job that I took on, I wanted to make sure my, my purpose was to make sure that I learned something new. Mm. So there always had to be a new element. So Edelman, it was learning the nuts and bolts. The smaller agency, it was um, understanding how to do it for a different audience. Mm -hmm. You know, from the smaller agency, I went to the American Cancer Society. That mm -hmm. was healthcare, healthcare communications and advocacy and grassroots work. Um, Probably one of the, the projects that I'm most proud of was the New York City smoking ban and the role that we played as, mm. as American Cancer Society in making sure that 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 bill was passed here in New York and, you know, subsequently in other areas. But, um, you know, so every every single job that I took on, even though it didn't seem like there was a reason for me, there was it was mm -hmm. what's the new experience that I was going to learn? What's the new skill set that I would learn besides the nuts and bolts of communication? Well, that's that's tremendous. And it's a it's a great background. And I love the fact that um, what you're saying is, you know, obviously you, you look you look too young to have worked in seven different <laughs> organizations. But at the end of the day, what you're saying is at least what I'm hearing. And it's very important is that communication and writing skills are, are really critical skills for young people to have. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like even now sitting, you know, at a higher, higher level, you know, when I look for candidates, I, I make sure that I'm looking for someone who, who can really write someone who, who uh, enjoys it too. Right. Because it's not just a matter of writing. You have to also kind of enjoy doing that. And yeah. for me, writing always feels like a puzzle. You know, my mm -hmm. first thought is who am I trying to reach and how mm -hmm. am I going to reach them? You know, and so that's that's how I start when I have a blank piece of paper, um, making sure I understand who my audience is and what's going to be the best way to reach them. Yeah, very, very important. And that's uh, unfortunately, it's something we we working in a college atmosphere, we need to stress more and more because in this day and age with with the you know obviously the the social media platforms and you know there's really is not a lot of emphasis on clear crisp you know uh, concise writing skills it's more get to the point quickly and don't worry about how you get there so yeah. I and then with, that. with chat gpt you know uh, that that's going to change the environment somewhat you yeah. know and i and I, I keep a close eye on things like that because I wonder how that how that will affect, you know, folks and the way that we write and stuff. But I, I do think I don't see it as a threat. I see it more as an added skill that you would that you have sort of like a resource that you would have. Mm -hmm. um, but you would I could never I would never move away from my original and original writing you know i would never move away from that but um mm -hmm. not scared of it just interested in learning how it'll affect everything you know yeah L lifelong learning is another theme i'm getting from you and that's uh that's another great great uh, great concept to put forth and and by the way congratulations on the smoking uh that was you know obviously uh, where I I'm part of a radio show also and one of our uh, sponsors is is a non-smoking uh, group and that's uh, and you know because they target the youth and we won't get into that now but at the end of the day it's it's pretty important so um so where where'd you grow up where you're from so I was born in El Salvador okay and 
I was born in El Salvador in the middle of the Civil War. Um, well, uh, before the Civil War, but you know, during during my youth, my young youth, um, Civil War started happening. I grew up in a family that worked for all American companies. My mom worked for Levi's. My dad, yeah. worked, my dad worked for Sheraton Hotel. Um, my uncle had a Hardee's franchise. Um, so my entire family worked for American companies. And so when the Civil War broke out in El Salvador, a lot of the American countries started to pull out of El Salvador. And so my family found themselves having to make a transition. My mom's company decided to pull out, Levi's. They gave her a nice severance package. And as the situation in El, Sal in Sa El Salvador got worse, and my brother was a young teenager, um, my mom worried about his safety and whether he would, you know, be okay. And so she decided that she wanted to leave and she wanted to take her severance mo money to move her family here to the U.S. And okay. so we left my dad behind because my dad wanted to stay back for his mom and mm -hmm. make sure the rest of his family was okay. But my mom took that, you know, brave move to, mm -hmm. to like two young kids and come to the U.S. and and try to figure out her her luck out here. Yeah, brave is an understatement. Well, obviously that's the kudos to her. Obviously, and where where did you move when you came to the states? Yeah, so I was I was six years old, and I had two uncles that lived that already lived here in the states, and they they lived in Long Island. So oh. I grew up in I grew up in Port Washington. Oh, nice. Okay, not far from where I grew up. So. We grew up in Lindenhurst, so it's Suffolk County. But uh, my yeah, family was... now lives in Bayshore. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Yeah. And you, you, you correctly called out as soon as we got on that I was had the city field backdrop and the in the Mets background. But uh, so th this, uh, so and and any any connection to baseball before this job? Anything that were you? Were you a fan? Were you interested? Or was it just? Yeah, you know, I was a I was a casual fan.